The most important and distinguishing part of this pizza isn't the topping, it's the crust. Isn't it, Brian? That's right. And who knew Chicago pizza was supposed to be, according to some, a thin crust pizza? I went to Vito and Nick's in the south side of Chicago, and I spent the morning with owner Rose George, and she walked me through the entire pizza making process, and it was pretty incredible, and I have to admit, I'm a convert after spending the morning with her. So we have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour here, and for our dough, we're going to add two teaspoons of granulated sugar. It helps to feed the yeast that's going in right now. But it won't make the crust sweet, will it? No, no, it's just fuel for the yeast. One and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, and one teaspoon of table salt. We're just gonna give that a quick three seconds in the food processor to combine. To this, we're gonna feed in three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of cold water along with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. So I'll combine these two first so we can just do it all in one quick and easy pour. We want the water to be ice cold because the mixer tends to warm the dough up pretty quickly and if it gets too hot, it can kill the yeast. And we'll let this go until this dough starts to come together and takes about 60 seconds. All right, we're looking for all the dry flour to be moistened. That's good right there. But we have a perfect hydration here with this dough right now. We don't want to incorporate any more flour. So we're just going to lightly grease the counter. Just rub it with a little olive oil. You don't have to use very much at all because remember there's a little bit of olive oil in the dough already. So it's not really prone to sticking too badly. Now we're just going to give the dough a few turns on the oil counter just to combine it. So I'm just kneading this by giving it a press with the palm of my hand and giving it a quarter turn each time. And folding it over in between. Exactly. And you don't have to do much here. Just enough to combine the dough. Then I'll just roll it on the counter like this into a ball shape. And then we're going to throw it into a lightly greased bowl. Cover it with plastic wrap. And we're going to let this dough rise at room temperature until it's doubled in size. And that takes about two and a half hours. Okay, Julia, while our dough is rising, we could turn our attention to the sauce. And I think you'll be happy to know this is a quick, easy, Stir together sauce, no, oh, no cooking involved. I like no cook pizza sauces. Yeah, I do too because the oven does a lot of the work for you and there's no need to spend hours cooking a, a sauce down. So we have one eight ounce can of tomato sauce. That's great because it comes with sugar, salt, spices already in it. So we're already starting off with a little bit of flavor. To that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of tomato paste. Just kick up the tomato flavor a little bit. And then we're gonna add two teaspoons of sugar. So there's sugar in the dough, sugar in the sauce and you swear this won't be a sweet pizza. No, it's not sweet. It's just a little sugar that helps balance things out. One half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now, Italian seasoning is great because it has sage, thyme, oregano, basil. Instead of using each one of those individual herbs in small amounts, kind of a shortcut to use the Italian seasoning. And then one half teaspoon of fennel seeds. And then we'll just whisk this together to dissolve the tomato paste. That's it. That was easy. When I had the pizza at Vito and Nick's, they have a very distinctive type of sauces that they use and they go through about a thousand pounds of it per week. Wow. I mean it's a really good sausage, has a nice fermented flavor and I just felt like I couldn't get that exact flavor out of store-bought Italian sausage. So we have one and a half pounds of coarsely ground pork and coarsely ground pork will give you that distinctive sausage chew. Sometimes you can find it in the case but other times you can ask the butcher for it and they're more than happy to do it for you. Gotcha. Okay and to that we're going to add one tablespoon of fennel seeds and we've gone ahead and pre-toasted these fennel seeds and we want to just give them a quick crack by putting them in a zipper lock bag and seal the bag and then I just want to kind of run over them with a rolling pin. This is just going to really release their flavor. We're not looking to pulverize them here. Just break them up into smaller pieces. I can smell it all the way over here. Yeah, that's, it was immediate. Yeah, it's the toasting. The toasting does a lot for you to help release the oils and the fennel seeds. So we're going to add the fennel seeds, the crushed fennel seeds right Woo. to the... Pretty fragrant, huh? That is really fragrant. And I can already tell this is not going to taste like your average supermarket sausage. This no. is going to have a lot more flavor. Yes. Then we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of sugar. You know, there's a salty sweet balance that has to happen in life. So <laughs> one and a half teaspoons of salt. There you go. One garlic clove. It's a large garlic clove that we've minced to a paste. Now you could either do this in a garlic press or you could do it on a microplane and just grate it finely. Three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper. One quarter teaspoon of dried oregano, and one quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So this isn't really gonna be that spicy, just a little red pepper flakes. Right, okay, so we're gonna mix this on low speed for 60 to 90 seconds until it just all comes together. The stand mixer does a great job of emulsifying the fat and distributing the fat evenly throughout the meat. And it also helps stretch and link those proteins so you get that sausage chew. All right, Julia, you can see that the sausage is taken on this real tacky texture. And that's exactly what we're looking for. You know, it really smells pretty good with the garlic and the fennel seeds in there. And we're gonna let this sausage 
and marinate for a bit because that way the flavors will distribute and kind of really soak into the meat. So we'll let it go for at least an hour in the fridge, cover it with plastic wrap and we'll transfer it over. Okay, it's been pretty easy up until this point and now comes the real challenging part. We're gonna roll out the dough. So this will make two pizzas. Working on a lightly floured counter here. I'm going to split the dough in half. 10 ounces each is what we're gonna need, so. Ooh. Ooh, on the nose. Nailed it, huh? Well done, sir. Don't see that every day. <laughs> we're gonna start off on a floured counter. All right. I would recommend that we start with the cut side down. Okay. I start by just using my fingertips to kind of poke it into a round. We're gonna try and stretch it to about eight inches, and I've given you a ruler on your side. Yeah, I got eight inches, basically. All right. I'm gonna flour my rolling pin. Okay. Now, what's the final dimensions we're going for here? We're gonna go for 12 inches across. Okay. And that'll give us about a one quarter inch thick dough. All right. Well, I like how you're spinning it, because that's how I do my pie dough, to keep it nice and round. I sort of spin it between every roll. I think that's pretty good. That's about a 12 inch round. Okay, so now we're gonna bring this sheet of dough onto our pizza peels. Before we put them on the peel, we wanna dust the peel liberally with cornmeal. So we don't wanna peel the pizza off the peel, we want it to slide off the peel. All right, so I'm just gonna pick mine up and just transfer it right over there. And just slide it back this way and work on it. So now, we're saucing. So we wanna take our sauce. This is the full amount of sauce that we made. I just divided it in half so we have enough for each pizza. And then with the bowl of the spoon, just go around. You wanna push the sauce right to the edge. All right. Okay, that looks great. We have about six ounces of sausage each, and now we're going to put dime-sized pieces of sausage all over this pizza. Well, and also the sausage is going on raw. We're gonna cook this pizza at a very high temperature, 500 degrees, and it's gonna cook for long enough to cook the sausage through, and the sausage will still be moist. It won't mm. be dry and crumbly. And all the flavors of the sausage will still be on the pizza. Exactly. Won't be left behind in some skillet. It ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Wow, this is not a skimpy amount of sausage, I want to point out. That's why this pizza is so great. Oh. Well, if we were competing, I'd say I won, but you know, <laughs> this isn't a competition, Brian. We'll just see, we'll see how mm. they come out. Okay, sausage is on, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna put the cheese on. Cheese goes on much the same way as the sauce, all the way to the edge. So we have one and a half cups, or six ounces, of mozzarella per pizza. And this is whole milk mozzarella. This is not a place to be using part skim or non-fat mozzarella, because it doesn't melt the same way. All right, and now the final touch, the quarter teaspoon of oregano. It seems like such a small amount, but you really, really taste it at the end. All right. So before we go into the oven, just give your pizza a little wiggle and make mm. sure it still shimmies on the peel. Because if it's sticking anywhere, you could just lift the edge and throw a little bit of cornmeal well, on it. Well, I got a little sticky. This is not where you want to play around. All right, I'm good. So we have two ovens heated to 500 degrees, and there's a pizza stone on the lowest rack that's been preheating for a full hour. So it's nice and hot. And when you put it on the stone, you want to start at the back and just kind of shimmy and let the pizza slide right off. All right, okay. so there's a little arc to it. And we're going to take these pizzas a little bit darker than you would typically expect. That's the thing at Vito Nicks. They cook the pizza so dark that people actually send them back. Oh, really? Yes. They look burned. Yes, the old owner, Nick, used to stand by the oven. And if the cheese had only gone from this nice white to that yellow, golden brown that we all mm -hmm. always pull the pizza out at, He'd yell, that's canary, put it back in the oven. <laughs> I like the accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Chicago accent. Because the pizza is supposed to be, according to Nick, nice and brown on top. Okay, and in order to get to that dark brown cheese, those pizzas are gonna have to cook anywhere between 10 and 14 minutes. We're baking these pizzas at the same time because we have two different ovens. If you only had one oven, you'd bake them one at a time. Exactly. Oh! All right, Julia, should I grab yours? Yeah, let's see how it's doing. Oof. That is not canary. <laughs> so we're gonna let these pizzas cool for five minutes before we cut them. Yeah, they are pretty lava hot. Yes. Okay, it's been a painful five minutes, but <laughs> we're ready to cut the pizza. So at Vito Nick's, they don't cut the pizza into triangles. They cut it into squares. Uh, bar pizza style. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go three swipes this way, turn it around, three swipes the other way. I'm gonna give you a piece from the center. Mmm. Then also an edge piece. Oh, this smells delicious. All right, before you dig in, you have a center piece there? I do. All right, the way to measure a good and perfectly cooked piece of pizza is that the center piece should be able to stand up straight and support the full weight of the ingredients without flopping over. Oh, look at that. It should be that crispy. Mmm. That's a tasty pizza. 
That's not just tasty, right? I actually think this might be the best piece of pizza I've ever had. I've eaten no. a lot of pizza. Come on. You know, I'm serious. You know why? Because the crust on the bottom has texture, it's crisp, but the sausage has actual flavor. The sausage stays very fresh and moist and doesn't dry out. You were right about the balance right. of a little bit of spicy and a little bit of that sugar. And just enough salt to throw it all in the, mm -hmm. in the right spot. Brian, I gotta hand it to you. Best pizza yet. Oh, well you. done. It's my pleasure, thank you. So if you want to make an authentic Chicago thin crust pizza, start by making pizza dough in the food processor using all-purpose flour, yeast, and olive oil. While the dough rises, whisk together a no-cook sauce using canned tomatoes, then use a stand mixer to make sausage with ground pork and fennel seeds. To make the pizzas, roll the dough out into a 12-inch round, transfer to a pizza peel, top with sauce, sausage, and cheese, and bake in a hot oven until it's no longer canary. From Cook's Country, the ultimate recipe for Chicago thin crust pizza. Well done, man. Thank this you. is amazing. Lesson learned, don't eat canaries, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>